Good afternoon, Profiteer Traders, and welcome to another Profiteer Trading video. Today we are going to run down how I trade the opening bell without fear. That's the most important element. Take a second to read the risk disclaimer. Remember that trading futures and options involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Opinions, market data, and recommendations are subject to change without notice. Past performance is not indicative of future results. So please remember that when you spend time in the Discord, when you spend time in the Zoom room, we are not giving financial advice, and it is for educational purposes only. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. All right, welcome traders. Uh, today what I'm going to do is I'm going to run down four markets that I traded during the open today. Gold, crude oil, NASDAQ, S&P, and uh, I'm sorry, five markets, euro included. So I'm going to basically go through the rundown of how the opening bell looks like. Um, there was a particular exercise that I was uh, trying out today called cut and reverse. You can refer to the educational material in the Discord room to get a better idea of what that looks like, but I'll explain it simply. Every trade I take, I cannot go flat. So if I want to take the other side, you know, if, I, if I'm long and I think that it's going to turn around and, and start selling, then I need to take the short trade. So this is a difficult exercise uh, to get comfortable with because you're learning to be comfortable while being uncomfortable. And that's what I think trading uh, is all about. So let's go ahead and look at the uh, order flow ladders and see what that looks like. Let me get myself out of the way here. Okie dokie. So you're gonna hear the squawk from the day that, um, from today in the background as well. Let's see here, okay. Open this up a little bit. Whoops. All right, there we go. So let me pull out my tool here so that you guys can see what I'm so just a reminder share at the top of the hour looking out for potential comments from ECB's Lagarde. Okay. She's giving the introductory so you should see the ladders uh, now. on the presentation of the ECB's annual report. And you should see my annotation the text tool will be made just available a minute here. On the ECB's website. <clears throat> Let me use yellow so you can see it better. Okay. So here we have gold, crude oil. NASDAQ, S&P, and the Euro. When you see a pink block surrounding the price, it means I'm short. If you see a blue block surrounding the price, it means that I'm long. So at the moment, you can see that I'm long crude oil at 50.46. 20 seconds. I'm Looking short for potential comments gold at 15.77. And I'm short the Euro at uh, one spot 92.45 and I'm flat on S&P and I'm uh, I believe at this point I was long NASDAQ if I'm not mistaken so a couple of things that you should be paying attention to is the fact that I have no stops at least near near term stop so I, I saw a discussion going on in the room today regarding crude oil and how um, you know three three tick stops can be a killer or how you know crude oil is sort of beating people up. Um, and this is a great example of why that is. And it's not just in crude oil, it's in all markets. And it's because rotations relative to the corresponding market are going to have particular behavior. So you can see relative to the spread of where I'm long, 5046, you know, we've been ticking below, above, you know, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven ticks down. And you can see I'm not quite reacting yet because as long as we hold 50 31s on crude oil, there's absolutely no reason for me to sell because that's the level that I've identified as key inflection. And you can see what happened there. You know, we're ticking down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we take straight away back to the entry. And this is just distribution. 
this is what happens when buyers and sellers are trimming or uh, firming up an area of liquidity. So if you're trading a market like crude oil on a day like today where liquidity was very sort of widespread and you can see like now we're suddenly up on the trade multiple ticks and the reason that is is because everybody's watching 50 30 up to 50 40 and this is where you're seeing that attempted breakout you can see on gold that we're fading after the opening bell and we're short three lots and we're essentially uh, extrapolating profits off of a downtrending continuation which took a while to um, really sort of find direction because to kind of point this out to you guys uh, let's see here if I can fast forward you can see here okay I try to get long 7520s because I have to cut in reverse. You can see I'm trying to get long NASDAQ at 75, 76. And I've gone from short Euro to long Euro 32.25. Because remember, I have to cut and reverse. So let's fast forward a little bit. So you can see that gold was unable to break 75.20, so we're short again. We're still long 46s on crude. We're still long 75 or 95.76 on NAS, and we're still short 93.45 on Euro. Let's go ahead and fast forward a little bit. And now look, we're long again Euro, short NAS suddenly, long gold, still long crude. Still long NAS, 9581. Long Euro, short gold. So you can see we're bouncing around. As far as crude goes, the continuation pattern was clear. And to reiterate, this required a lot of patience and a lot of sort of like ups and downs, ups and downs before the breakout. And in order to identify that, we had to identify sim one simple thing, and that was one level that held us support. And if that level held us support, not if it ticked to the level and then moved below it, but you know, does it tick around the level? Does it continue to snap to that level? Does it show conviction for that level on a buying imbalance? And that is that is one of the more difficult things to identify when you're learning to trade. So you can see now we're picking up direction a little bit. We're long NAS and that is the correct direction. We're long Euro and that's the correct direction. But let me make something clear to you guys. The this fact that, that we're long euro is Martin something Michael to consider John, for the entire Frankie market structure Bleachy. in the sense Always that, enjoy seeing that euro is a risk-off asset. A personal so if euro is moving uh, out, a good one at then that. you better believe that gold is going to start trending so, in that direction and that equities are going to sell off pretty good soon. Tuesday. It's not like it's a, a you know, completely synchronized correlation where it happens right after the other one occurs. You have to wait. Gain. But I'll show you how this and turns these are just out. So you can see NAS is unable really to break, and they help so I start to get short. So I'm short now 9580s, and I'm long 7530s on gold. For me. You can see here's a burst up um, on gold led by you know, Euro, that I'm and now NAS is selling forward. off. There will be times it does not work at so this, all. this is the nature of this exercise like and yesterday, learning to understand the ebb and flow of the market. So of course we're here. And here now, we go. Right? We're getting some momentum no on the sell side. We're getting momentum day. on crude long but side. It's interesting to and then we're yet to bullish. see the breakout. That's on bullish. Gold. The better are the looking to. Um, Let's fast forward a little bit and more I can here. Straight up into the and now you can see we're starting to get but, some you know, headway on gold. Um, and remember, we shorted the 77 down to the 74.30s, you know, you oh, and now we're long because we're extrapolating both sides of the spectrum. We get that out there in the open. You. Cars, which is, but as I lost connection. Let's give it the. You know, I did get 
that you're putting on. But you can see we're weight. still long. Like when I'm uh, looking at quotes, gold, and I'm trying to navigate this made a, type of a stuff. It's substantial move so back to 77. And I think we are very short kind of, Nasdaq you know, from gone over into doing that more. Uh, and I'm looking at these prices. Dumped significantly. Um, crude was kind of unable to find its way. I've got them 56. Uh, and it's and comparing these euro is slowly ticking up. You know, on that just having one minute small account butterfly that's here lately as it fades here a little Still bit you know gold. taking some of this off and you can see now on crude we're starting to get signals because, that like this said, thing is going to start to uh, downtrend to so notice how i'm waiting to get out of this trade I'm almost always up until we retest those 30s 50 had. 30s and then if we close it maybe so i've all against it. We can't break below 50 30s. It heads back to my entry at 50 46. Incredibly starts to bit. show that area as Even resistance. As a, a very so, this is when I start getting a clue cup, on you know, crude oil. Grand overnight is where you, you want to be. Still make a few here. Amazon and, and so, notice how we see resistance and CMG we can't seem to break. Edge. And now we're starting to hit new here, levels. And then, boom, we've got a nice big can see anyway that we're retesting 31s. I'm keeping an eye on that range, because, and then like, suddenly we break 31s. Now notice how I don't get out of the trade immediately. Back and forth with it today, I basically so wait for it to get a little bit closer Lawrence, to my entry, like so I'm not just outright going ahead and taking off profits. Right? Now I'm short 28. No different because than it broke my level. Coming in, so I'm going to work building now I'm long into 35 because I'm indecisive in this moment. And this is something that you can all learn from because we've all done this before. But notice, okay, long 35s, still showing continuation towards the upside. Sorry, I'm just trying to make this as cohesive as I can for you. And notice Euro has broken out. Gold is no longer upside to continuation. Then at the 6 p.m. open, your crude is attempting to retest 45s again. So we've extrapolated up to 10 ticks here on a lot. Headache for two hours. Crude gold continues to retest those 50s. Super helpful, so. We're not short gold, long NAS. Sure. So you can really see how much back and forth is going on, but no matter what happens, we still manage to retain the the profit. Down you can see here we've got 1,300 printing. Regardless of being down significantly at one point, we still found our direction within the market in order to properly extrapolate where we found the opportunity. So here's the exercise. So you enter a trade, and when you get out, you have to go at least the other way. So that means if you have one lot, then you need two lots um, in order to, at least two lots to trade, the, to, to trade the position. You can't add to the trade when offside, so you don't average. And um, ask yourself these questions. How does this impact when you enter? Does it change the way you view your exit? Are you holding on to trades longer or shorter? And what analysis are you using to make decisions? Is it different than usual? So all really important stuff that can really help you identify what's going on in the market. Um, so yeah, guys, kind of a short video today. I didn't want to get too much into it, but like again, you yeah. can see here nice well trip. down into the session. We're two hours into the session. You know, we're losing a bit of money here on uh, crude we were losing a little uh, bit on gold options, but we're making some on nas shorting it and then you can see finally nas breaks down gold catches the bid that we were waiting for and euro manages so to catch that bid as buying. well thank you, thank so you. the point is is within two hours of trade we've taken multiple whoops we've taken multiple sides and still managed to extrapolate um plenty of profits and you can see towards the end of the session here we have still 1300 printing and you've seen me go left to right, left to right. Now, obviously, it's not um, the most like cost-effective thing for commissions, but when it comes to the proprietary world, being flat means being up about four grand. And I'll, I'll go ahead and say that. You know, you got to pay for the cost of doing business. So, if you want to learn to be a five, six-figure trader, these are exercises that you should consider. All right, guys, that's all I wanted to do today for you. Um, hope you guys have a great rest of your evening. I will be see you all tomorrow morning.